Elliot's what you call her. All these 90s songs, they always talk on the track and it's so funny. I don't mean to be bold, but I gotta let you know. Please gotta be bold. And talk about yourself in third person. No, Maya's got a thing for you. <laughs> hey guys, so I'm going to the beach tomorrow and I don't want to wear the clothes that I already own. I want to make something. So today I'm going to be making a scent. Is my, what's going on with my color? I'm going to be making a center ruched button up shirt dress maxi midi kind of length the video could have i already have one like this on my channel but it's a stretchy uh pattern and this one's woven well my fabric has a little bit of stretch but the pattern is based on a woven fabric so let's get into it Sorry guys, you know me, what's a video of mine without a bit of singing? So for this project, I'll be using this lovely cotton linen blend fabric. It does have a slight stretch to it, but not enough to be used on a stretchy pattern. This fabric was an actual dream to work with. It was easy to cut and sew up, and on top of that, I was able to use my water soluble marker and not chalk. When cutting, I made sure to mark my dart placement and gathering notches on both pieces. The pieces you should have are two collars and two collar stands cut on the fold, two front dress pieces, two back dress pieces and two plackets. To sew the darts up, I like to pin right through the centre of the markings for accuracy, then I sew from one end to the other end without reverse stitching, just because this can cause a bump to form on the fabric if not executed properly. Next you want to place the centre back pieces on top of each other, right sides facing and sew with a straight stitch. Then iron the seam open and overlock each side individually. I like to do it this way because it makes it easier for me to make alterations if needed. For example, sometimes you need to take the waist in at the centre back rather than the side seams to accommodate for the bum. Now let's start the collar. Take your collar pieces and sew all around excluding the shorter length. We need to flip it right sides out. Usually collars would be interfaced for stability, but I've worked with this fabric before. Maybe you've seen the video, it was a dress I made for my mom. Anyways, I know the collar gets really sturdy and it wasn't a look I was going for. I wanted a much more casual and relaxed look. But back to the collar. Once that's done, snip the corners so we can get a sharp corner. I like to use a blunt sharp tool to get a good point to my collar. Next, iron it flat and then take it back to the sewing machine. We'll be doing a top stitch detailing all around the collar edge, but this is optional. I like to lengthen my stitch slightly when doing this. Now take the collar stands and sandwich the collar piece in between. If your fabric's different on both sides, make sure you're intentional in which side you place the collar down. I like to fold my collar stand in half and put a pin there so I know exactly where the middle is. Then I fold the collar in half and match it up with the pin. Now pin along the length of the collar stand and sew with a straight stitch, being careful at the corners. Once that's done, snip into the curvy part of the collar. I ended up trimming the curve down completely because it wasn't laying nicely. Next, iron the collar so it lays flat. On the front of your dress, we made some notches when cutting the fabric. Make sure your pieces are facing right sides up and the curve of the pieces are going in opposite directions. Change your stitch settings to the longest length your machine can do and then without back stitching, sew from one notch to the other. I like to keep an extension of thread for ease of pulling later. Make sure you do two stitches instead of one as it gives a better effect when gathering. Now together, pull on either the top two threads or the bottom two threads. Now for the placket, I ironed mine in half so that I had a clear guide to work with. Then you want to pin the placket to the centre front of the dress, right sides facing. I started with the top and stopped when I reached the gathering area, then moved to the bottom of the dress and worked my way up to the gathering area again. Then I was left with the middle which made it easy for me to manipulate the gathers to the perfect length and also distribute them evenly. Then I pinned the section in place once I was happy with the positioning and sewed the placket on with a straight stitch. Next, iron the seam allowance towards the inside of the placket. This is a bit finicky and annoying, but this is where hemming web can save the day. So I just trapped it in between and ironed it to melt the glue and seal the seam. So fold the seam allowance under, 
trap some hemming web in between and iron it down just over the seam line. Then take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch on the right side of the fabric. Again, I chose to lengthen my stitch for aesthetic purposes. And repeat for the other front side of the dress. Make sure you do it on the correct side of the fabric. Now we have to start putting the body together before we can finish attaching the collar. So you want to overlock the shoulders and side seams of the front and back of the dress. Then sew the seams with the fabric's right sides facing and then iron the seam open for a neat finish. Now back to the collar. Pin the collar to the neck of the dress, right sides facing. Again, being intentional with which side you place down. Whatever side of the fabric is facing the neck of the dress at this point will be the underneath of the collar. Do a straight stitch from the edge of the collar stand to the other side and then iron the seam allowance up into the collar. Now fold the seam allowance of the inside of the collar stand and pin it just below the seam line. And then just like we did the placket, you wanna use hemming web to hold everything in place. Once that's done, you can take it to the sewing machine and do a straight stitch all around the collar stand edge. Again, lengthening the stitch slightly because this is a detailing stitch. And that's the collar complete. Next, overlock the bottom of the dress and the armholes. I hemmed the bottom of my dress with 1.5cm seam allowance and 1cm for the armholes. Once the hemming was done, it was time for the final step which was the button and buttonholes and this is where the fate of the dress is decided because if this goes wrong, I'll just give up there and then. So I just measured the placket length and divided that by the amount of buttons I wanted to use to determine how far apart to mark the buttonhole placement. Then I sewed the buttonholes on my machine and it went well. Well kind of, like some buttonholes messed up but luckily I could fix it. After that I carefully seam ripped them open and by this point it was past midnight so I was like trying to be extra cautious because you girl was tired. But again another success and then I placed the placket so they were aligned and marked through the center of the buttonhole to figure out where I was my buttons on then i disabled the feet on my machine attached my button foot switched to a zigzag stitch and sewed them on it was very very tedious and repetitive but was the mentality the time was 4 a.m i went to bed for three hours and then got up to go to the beach and film this final reveal for you you guys enjoyed that video and if you did don't forget to like comment subscribe also please let me know what you'd like to see from me in the future what you'd like to see me make any patterns that you want released i also just want to say a big thank you to everybody who supports my work and um, just the comments the love that you guys give me um, it's really encouraging and it definitely keeps me going so thank you so much